so Hall of Fame ceremonies tonight, uh, 6 p.m. C- Central Time on the NFL Network. They'll be broadcast, of course. Uh, the inductees this year are Dallas guard Larry Allen, uh, Ravens lineman uh, Jonathan Ogden. Was he a tackle or a guard? I think he was a tackle, wasn't he? Tackle. Yeah. Uh, Bill Parcells, uh, head coach for the Giants, the Patriots, the Cowboys, I think, the Jets, too. I don't know. I think you coach the Jets, too. Um, Packers linebacker Dave Robinson from back in the day, <laughs> 60s, 70s era linebacker. Uh, Bucks and Raiders defensive tackle Warren Sapp, whom the Vikings passed on. Yeah, uh-huh. big mistake. Yep. And finally, our own egomaniacal Chris Carter. <laughs> So Gotta look at his football career, not his broadcasting career. Exactly, exactly. Yep. So uh, I put together a uh, a uh, infographic for Carter's career. You can find it at the site MinnesotaVikingsChat.com. I'll include it in the in the um, show notes. But let's go over briefly uh, a little bit of uh, the highlights of his career. So Carter went to Ohio State um, uh, for college. He stood six foot three, two hundred eight pound, two hundred and eight pounds. <laughs> um, wore, yeah, 208, wore a Megatron back then. Uh, he wore number 80 for the Eagles and for the Vikings, wore number 88 for the uh, Dolphins, whom he played for in the last year of his career in 2002. Played for the Eagles from 87 to 89, uh, was famously cut from the team by Buddy Ryan, who said, what, Rick? He can't catch, t- all he does is catch touchdowns. All he does is catch touchdowns. Uh Bill Parcells, I think at the time, called him and asked him how soon he could uh, make it to New York. Uh, but the Vikings snatched him up on waivers before uh, before the Giants could. And um, for $100, perhaps the best $100 the Vikings... No, not perhaps. The best $100 the Vikings ever spent. Um, so his quarterback in Philadelphia was, was Randall Cunningham. Uh he played for the Vikings from 90 to 2001, and he had, as his quarterbacks, Rich Gannon, Sean Salisbury, Rich, uh, Jim McMahon, Warren Moon, Brad Johnson, Randall Cunningham, Jeff George, Dante Cup, Culpepper, Todd Bauman, and Spurgeon Wynn. <laughs> yeah, he must have broke quarterbacks. <laughs> he consistently had... Uh, had um, Thousand yard seasons, uh, many seasons over a hundred yards or a hundred receptions. Uh, Ninety eight came along. We had Randy Moss and Jake Reed with the three deep. That was awesome until it ended. <laughs> uh, he was named to the NFL All Decade Team. Um, ended his Vikings career with one thousand four receptions as a Viking. 12,383 yards, 110 touchdowns. Uh, His total career, he had 1,101 receptions, 13,899 yards, 130 touchdowns. Um, An amazing receiver. What are your best memories of? I see you have a jersey there behind you. That's right. uh, He's just unbelievable. So incredible. And simply catching the ball. You know, Moss was physically dominant. Carter wasn't. He just caught the ball. And just caught the ball, caught the ball, caught the ball. Uh, what I always think of when I think of Carter is the contrast between when he first got here and he actually had a lot of drops his first year. And I was like, this guy just can't catch. And the contrast in my mind, the thinking of him then, I'm just like, you know, it's great to have an athletic receiver, but a guy who drops the ball all the time is got this limitation to when he was in his prime for three or four years there at the end of the 90s when he just caught everything. If he could get his hand on it, he could catch it. And, you know, in 98, we always talk about Moss, but Carter was absolutely on top of his game. And over, like, a three-year period there, 98, 99, and maybe 2000, it was our third down. I, I, at some point, it was like 31 year. The whole year was 38% of our third down first downs were Carter. And, like, we didn't use the running game on third and two. We always used the same guy, and team just couldn't stop it. I mean, uh-huh. it's so tough to double-team a guy who could catch anything. It was just pure joy watching him play. 
just we were lucky. Yeah, yeah. Um, the NFL, NFL.com, Greg Rosenthal's got a piece on uh, on the inductees this year, and what he he asked Carter what defined his game, and Carter's response was, "I catch the ball. You throw the ball, I catch it. You throw it uh, close to me, I catch it. You make me do something crazy to catch, I still catch it." And that's absolutely what you're talking about. I, you know, told my nephews growing up, if you get a fingertip on the ball, it's your responsibility to catch the ball. And uh, that's what Carter was. Oh, my God. Having yeah. him extend the sideline the way he, he – I think that's the signature move of Carter is seeing him with tiptoes uh, gripping this, the in, interior of the sideline and catching the ball. Yeah. How he's six foot three, six yeah. feet high bounds. So a quarterback didn't have to throw it within the field of play to get get it. And get it. complete control of his feet and yeah. dragging his feet down, you know, almost always. Just and if anybody has not seen him or watched it, you know, some of those linemen that are going in today won't be much fun to watch their video. Watch Carter's videos, yeah. and yeah. it's just amazing. Yeah, I remember uh, my what, my distinct memory of him is against Denver, and uh, I think we were behind, and he just absolutely took over that game and made ridiculous catch after ridiculous catch. Um, mm -hmm. I you know one of the, a lot of them were those sideline variety where he just couldn't defend, and but then also he would he I remember one down the middle a seam route, and he was probably five feet in the air going after a ball, diving after a ball, parallel to the ground, catching it in the air with one hand. It's just, how does he do that? Yeah. I heard him describe his favorite catch once, and it was just diving around a defensive player and catching it just before it hit the ground on the other side of him. He just... He could imagine it, so he did it. To like, just... It was incredible, pure joy. Yeah. Well, I mean, we as we went through the list of Vikings quarterbacks that he played with, he had a lot of poor, not not so great quarterbacks to play to <laughs> make those ridiculous catches with. <laughs> yes. And then he got Warren Moon in his life, and things became very happy for him with yeah. uh, Moon throwing those perfect passes to him. So, uh, yeah, that was an absolute joy to watch. Um, it will be. Fun to see. I, I don't know whether it'll be fun or not to see him uh, do his speech. I think it's going to be interrupted a lot of times with tears. Very emotional guy. So, uh, but it, it, it's well deserved. And uh, it took him a, a few years Let's to get wrap in. it for this uh, this week. Uh, training camp is of course still going on, so there will be plenty to talk about next week. And I think uh, we'll have a, a preview of a, the first preseason game probably too. So. Uh, I'm David Erickson, your host. You can find me at minnesotavikingschat.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash minnesotavikingschat. On Twitter at twitter.com slash mnvikingschat. Use the Vikings chat hashtag, of course. And uh, Rick, you got anything you want to promote? I think people should absolutely make sure to throw in some uh, Carter memories. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I uh, Yes. It's Always a good time to uh, have an adult beverage and talk about Chris Carter memories. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Please uh, share some. Leave your uh, your uh, Carter memories in the uh, in the show notes, and then maybe we'll revisit them with uh, next week's show. And of course, uh, be sure to subscribe to the new YouTube channel. <laughs> Don't miss any of these fantastic chats. <laughs> Until next week, go Vikings. Go away.